so are you concerned that the Federal Reserve is behind the eight ball on inflation and you're going to have to do some serious catch up here? I wouldn't say I'm concerned that we're behind, but I do think action is required. And it's a three part action in my mind. One, we finish the taper. Two, we start lifting off of the zero lower bound. And then once we're sufficiently away from zero, we can argue what that is. Let's say for the sake of argument, uh, 100 basis points. Then we start thinking about the balance sheet normalization process. But I don't want to do that all at once. I think that's just the wrong way to go. Let's do them in stages. So, so potentially four hikes is what you're looking at next year. Yeah, at this I mean, point. that's possible. Let's see how the data turns out. Look, Q1 is going to be tough. Uh, Omicron has really whacked, <laughs> whacked us all. Uh, unfortunately, and hopefully we can recover from this. Hopefully what other countries' experiences have been will be ours and that we can get through this wave and learn to live with this virus. Um, that said, uh, we do need to take action on inflation, and it is more persistent than we thought a while ago. I've been off of the team transitory uh, team for a while now. I think we need to take action. I think it's appropriate to take action this year. Three is what I penciled in, but four is not out of the question in my mind. So the biggest question, I think, is how you are going to do all of this without tipping the U.S. economy into recession, especially at a time where the fiscal stimulus is also being withdrawn. How do you do that? Right. So we do it carefully and methodically. This is why I am not in the camp of raising rates and doing balance sheet normalization all at the same time. Let's start to raise rates. Let's then, when we get away from zero, move into a normalization process, put that on a glide path. It will be steeper, that path, than we did the last time around, because the nominal size of the balance sheet is larger. But then let's just put that in place, let it run. And if we need to adjust, we use our primary tool, which is the Fed funds rate, to adjust the stance of policy. Pat, uh, President Harker, if, if you see that the, uh, the, the, the inflation rate uh, is still well above target, that, that uh, unemployment is still nicely low at uh, 3 or 4 percent, but that the market really falls out of bed, do you just ignore what the market is doing? No, I mean, this is why I want to be methodical about it. I hope it won't, that won't happen uh, in that we take a measured approach to this. That's why, again, for me, I have three increases, 25 basis point increases in for this year. I'm open to four, depending on the data. But let's step back and look at inflation. We've reached our maximum employment mandate, in my mind. Inflation, there's two forces that are driving this. One is demand. That we can affect through monetary policy. The other is supply. It's supply of labor, supply of goods and materials. That we can't directly affect through monetary policy. Both things have to be solved at the same time. One in our hands, one not in our hands. I am more optimistic. I tend to be an optimist. Uh, I'm an engineer by training, so I like to solve problems. I think we're solving these supply chain problems. The labor supply issues we can talk about. There are lots of reasons why that's being held back. But this will be solved, and I think we'll learn to live with this, uh, this virus. And if we do that, we can start to get the economy back open full throttle. And, and just to be clear, though, there, that, that in, in order... To, to complete your aim to be methodical and careful about managing the economy, you will be considering what the stock market is doing as, as one of the fairly relevant factors to that. Sure. Well, markets generally. I mean, the transmission of monetary policy happens through those markets. So, of course, we care what happens to the market. That said, uh, I think if we, again, if we do this in a way where I'm not in the camp of just overshooting the, uh, what I think is the terminal rate of the Fed funds, uh, of the Fed funds, like 2.5%. I think we shouldn't just dramatically overshoot that and come back down. Let's go up to it methodically and watch how the markets evolve and how inflation evolves over the next couple of months and next couple of quarters. You mentioned the labor market, and I do want to touch on that because yeah. I mean, clear, clearly you guys are thinking there's enough progress there to move on rates as soon as March. But we're still 3.6 million jobs short of where we were pre-pandemic, and the employment to population yeah. ratio is still several percentage points lower right. than when it was pre-pandemic. So, so have we made enough progress there on jobs? So what is the reason that is the case? Is it lack of labor demand? Absolutely not. We've got millions and millions and millions of job openings. The problem is supply constraints. 
whether it's lack of childcare or schools opening and closing, uh, people fearful of the virus. I mean, these are the reasons we can't get people back to work, not due to lack of demand. So I think you really have to look at what the root cause of the labor supply issue is, and not just re say from the Macro 101 textbook, let you, we're not reaching maximum employment, keep rates low. It's not the medicine that's going to cure the disease of having not enough people in the labor force.